Beyond Reason Radio. Well, I think I'm going to try to do the impossible today. I'm going to try to be a voice of reason on the week's news. This week, it might be impossible. I don't know how you can sift through all of this stuff. So much has happened this week. And, I, you know, I've had a whole week to think about it. I do PM Orlando. I do some commentary on it. But throughout the week, I think about what am I going to talk about on Beyond Reason Radio? By the way, this is Beyond Reason Radio. I'm your host, Michael Yaffe, the voice of reason, the voice of truth in a world that is beyond reason. We are on until 8 p.m. tonight right here on News Radio 93.1 WFLA. Of course, you can catch the podcast. If you miss it, anywhere podcasts are available. I'm filling in for Carl Jackson. Usually you hear the Carl Jackson show 7 p.m. on Friday night, but he asked me to fill in tonight because he had prior commitment. So I am here once again at 7 p.m. on a Friday night and joined once again by Tom Benson. I think he had to wash his hair tonight is the person <laughs> he's not here. Oh, wait a minute. He doesn't have uh, any. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he just loved that joke. <laughs> but, yeah, so if you uh, – Carl Jackson will be back next week on Wednesday, though. Great political commentator. You can follow his podcast anywhere podcasts are available or uh, go to follow him on Facebook, uh, Carl Jackson Show. So – Going through the week's news, in just in the past hour or so, I've been kind of wrestling with how I want to start this show. Mm -hmm. Because, obviously, the big news is the mass shooting that happened last weekend. Sure. Two mass shootings. Horrible mass shootings. Too many mass shootings recently. And then you have, going throughout the week, the reaction to it, which is also beyond reason, and also just too much. And I'm I'm debating where I want to start with this, because there's... So we can talk about gun control. We can talk about mental health. We can talk about um, these loners who can't seem to find purpose and all of that stuff. So what I actually did today, and I I don't think a lot of people actually did this, but I I found the El Paso shooter. He put a manifesto on 8chan right before he did this. Mm -hmm. So I went and I read it. Uh Oh, I went and read his manifesto. Should I be concerned? Are you all right? (laughs) <laughs> I think I'm fine. It's, right. it's not. It's not an intellectual treatise by any by any stretch of the imagination. But I think most people, you know, most of the rhetoric this week has been blaming Trump for this. He says things like invasion. That's right out of Trump's mouth. That means he was incited by President Trump. So I went and read the manifesto. I usually don't like to do this because I don't want to give these horrible people. Any credibility. These monsters, any credibility or the satisfaction of knowing people are reading their stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's been so much other news around it this week that I'm like, okay, if I'm going to be a voice of reason on what's going on, I have to go and read this thing. So that's what I do. I go and read it. And, you know, I can can tell you about all the parts where he says specifically, I know they're going to blame Trump for this. My thoughts predate Trump. They're actually influenced by this and that. He, He mentions a I think there's a book called uh, The Great Something. It's something I never heard of. I think it's a white nationalist thing. Mm-hmm. And as I'm reading through it, my thoughts were, I know exactly what motivates this guy, guy, kids like this. I guarantee you that this monster was on, basically lived most of his life when he wasn't working or something on the internet. He basically is one of these people that goes on the internet And either, you know, not just to play video games or something, but goes on these forums and just reads article after article after article about this crisis or that crisis or this thing's destroying the country or that thing's destroying the country or this, you know, we need to do this. We need to do that. All the craziest stuff that you hear on a daily basis out there about how America's going to hell and destroying the country from whatever side, all sides, any side. And this is... And I'm sure he goes to conspiracy theory websites and hears all of this stuff on social media all over the place and just soaked it all in, believed it was all true, believed somehow he was smarter than everyone else and reacted to it and went nuts. Like they say, if you read a lie or say a lie often enough, people start to believe you. If you read it long enough on the internet, you start to believe it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he's doing. I think he's a lonely individual, a lonely young man 
who had no purpose in his life, who had no spiritual fulfillment in his life, who had no, like I said, overarching purpose or value in his life, and he was getting his purpose and his value from stuff he was reading on the internet. And he's soaking all of this all in and soaking this all in and becoming crazier and crazier. And it was giving him his purpose. All of a sudden now, I have a purpose. I'm going to save the country. And I'm going to go out and he reads these crazy white nationalists or whatever it is. And I'm going to go out and shoot people because it's going to save the country. And it's a sick, depraved mind that was trying to find an empty mind that was being filled with junk and trying to find a purpose. And this is the and and when you read this stuff, I'm you can tell this is not a guy who was, you know, going to the library and picking up books on history and philosophy and science and really trying to have a deeper understanding of politics and religion and really trying to understand what's actually going on in economics, really trying to have a deep understand of this stuff. He, he's not going to the bookstore and buying these really um, credited books on all of these things and trying to really expand his mind and under, understand his stuff. He's not getting it from there. He's, not, re- he's not reading the Federalists, in other words. Yeah, he's not reading the Federalists. He's not reading uh, Soul's basic economics. He's not reading Ayn Rand, or he's not reading, you know, whatever it is. He's, he, he's, you could tell that he just goes on the Internet and finds these articles after articles, and all of a sudden it's like, ah, look at what I know now. And it just it just all sinks in there. Not trying to get a deep understanding of these things, but it's just influenced by all this crap that's on the internet. You can tell. And you know how I can tell? Because he is all over the place. People are, you know, the, if you watch the mainstream media, you would think that he's just some crazy white winger. This guy, yes, he talks about immigrants. But he also talks about evil corporations. He also talks about how we're destroying the environment. You know, there's a part of it. I shouldn't laugh because this is sick. But it almost made me chuckle a little bit because he talked about one reason why he wanted to shoot up these people and stop immigration is because we have too many people in the country that are using too many resources. And it's destroying our environment. And we have to go and limit the amount of people in this country. It's the only way you can do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking... What is this guy, Thanos? Thanos from Avengers? That's exactly what Thanos in the comic book movie Avengers does when he does the snap. He wants to wipe out half a civilization because it's destroying the environment of the universe and using up all the resources. Is it, and it's, it's absurd. It's, it's, it's absurd. It's not a crisis. We're not using up all the resources. All you have to do is travel around the country and realize there are plenty of of unused resources in this country. And it's since the 60s, actually probably before then, we have been hearing that there isn't enough food to feed everyone. There isn't enough housing to house everyone. There isn't enough resources. And capitalism solves the problem every time. There is plenty of resources for even millions of more people in this country. So, the, But what I'm saying is, He is talking about everything that he thinks is a crisis over and over and over and over again. It's not, it's Republicans and Democrats. It's corporations and big government. It's immigrants and lazy Americans. It's environmentalism. It's everything. And that tells me exactly where he's getting his motivation. He's getting his motivation from reading crap stuff on the internet Soaking it all in, believing it's all true without really thinking deeply about it. And then thinking, oh, well, I'm going to be the hero now. I need this purpose in my life. I'm going to save the country, which is arrogance. So he's arrogant. He's ignorant. He's empty. And he's crazy. And he's not crazy, I'm saying, in the mental health crazy sense. I mean, you kind of have to be to do something like that. But he's not like, you know, totally hallucin. He's not hallucinating and totally out of his mind or something Mm -hmm. like that. He has a kind of an understanding of what he's doing. And this is the main thing that we really should get out of this is that there are, and it's a lot of young men in this country, there are a lot of young men that are lost souls in this country. They're lost, they're empty, they're 
They're, they don't have purpose. And they find their purpose in the wrong places. And that is probably one of the biggest motivating factors for what is going on with these mass shootings. It is. They're finding their purpose as men in the wrong places because too many there are too many holes in our culture that are not filling them with the right things. Whether it be faith or religion or taking, you know, faith and religion or your family or love, you know, real love of country and wanting to actually help other people and community. These things are lost in a lot of parts of our culture. And once again, you have that spiritual vacuum, which I've been talking about, and it's being filled with bad things. And this kid found it on crazy crap in the Internet, and he was filling it with those things. And if we don't actually address that issue, we're never going to solve this problem. You're talking about guns. The issue is guns now. We need need to stop guns. I'm telling you, when you read what these mass shooters like this kid say, there's nothing in him that convinces me that if there was not a gun, he would say, oh, well, I'm not going to do it now because I don't have a gun. I'm just going to stay home and be on the Internet. No, he's going to find another way to try to kill people because he actually believes it's his purpose to kill these people. When you have people that are that bent on that kind of destruction, they're going to find a way to do it. And that's why you have to address the people, not the weapon. You can, there are many ways to do mass killings without guns. We have seen it in this country. Oklahoma City bombing, bombing was a white nationalist crazy guy who killed 168 people without a gun. We saw it with the Boston bombers as well. We've seen it in Japan with a fire recently. We've seen even stabbings. There was a stabbing in California killed four people. You know, I looked up, because a lot of people will go to Britain, right? And they'll say Britain has these strict gun laws, and they don't have these mass shooting problems. Do you know that in 2017, 42 people died of terrorism in Britain? And they have a lot of stabbings. Well, they have stabbings, but they have terrorist attacks in Britain. So they're five times, Mm -hmm. or we're five times the population of them. So if you do 42 times five, it would be like 200 and something people killed in terrorist attacks in this country. It's a little bit less than mass shootings we've had recently, but our mass shootings are a recent epidemic. But it just shows you that in order to do these kind of killings, you don't need a gun. And I guarantee you, if you take away the guns, these sick people are going to try to find another way to kill because they believe, and he says it here, he thinks he's actually saving America by killing Mexican immigrants. He actually believes that. Someone that is that demented isn't going to stop because you get rid of the gun. And yet we're not addressing the problem. And it's really, it really bothers me. Now, this guy is also crazy. He believes that we should segregate, segregate the population based on race because ethnic, ethnic diversity is destroying our genetics or something stupid like that, which is absurd. <laughs> it's completely absurd. He probably has different ethnicities in his own blood that he doesn't realize we can totally get along in this country and be diverse at the same time like so much of his stuff is absurd and it's just a mixture of all this crap into one mind and he doesn't know how to sift through it he has no core he has no core he's no core values no core principles that can help him that can help guide him through the crap that's all out there in the internet and in our culture he has no he has no core And so instead of why can't we address the actual core problem then of young men who don't have a purpose, who don't have faith, who don't have family values and are seeking it in really bad, dangerous places. And it's going to get worse if we don't actually address the problem. So that's what we're going to do partly on this edition of Beyond Reason Radio. We also have to talk about later on in the show as well. The idea of political shaming. You know, these donors now of Trump are being shamed. Where does that lead? This heated political rhetoric now is getting out of hand. Where it leads is not good. And frankly, there's things that I'm reading this week that show that both sides, both sides, I know people don't want me to say that. Oh, you're going to try to both sides. Yes, because there are things on the right, too, that have really disturbed me this week as well. 
and I'll try to be a voice of reason on it all, and we will, and much more on this edition of Beyond Reason Radio. I'm your host, Michael Yaffe. We'll be right back. If you miss any of the show, you can download the Beyond Reason podcast on iTunes. The voice of reason in a world that is beyond reason is back now. Yes, welcome back to the show, everyone. This is Beyond Reason Radio. Yes, I am your voice of reason. You know, there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of junk out there wherever you go, especially in our culture. But I want this show to be a place where you can uh, hear a voice of reason, can kind of sift through the noise and actually like, ah, Mike's here. (laughs) <laughs> you're the little white angel sitting on our right shoulder yes i tried to i'm the conscience of wfla that's what carl jackson <laughs> called me and i stole it yeah i'm actually filling in for carl jackson today uh he had some prior commitments but he will be back next week and uh i know he was passionate on wednesday's show i'm being passionate i'm sorry i'm yelling tom benson <laughs> i don't mean to yell. i know it's friday and it's supposed to be fun i don't mean to yell but you have to understand that all this stuff like happens during the week and I don't really get to do this except till the end of the week. So it's like, it's like building up in me and it's, I have to let it out. It's a release. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, I, in person, I'm actually very quiet and reserved. If <laughs> People this, don't believe it. This show is your safety valve. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so on the show, I say I'm the voice of reason, but I always try to play other voices of reason as well. We've been talking about the mass sh- shootings that have happened recently. And like I said, I don't even like, they are mass shootings, but the issue wasn't just mass shootings. It's mass killings right now. The weapon is a gun, but they're not bent on mass shootings as much as killing lots of people. And the reason I, you know, I say that because I I'm telling you that if we get rid of the gun, they're going to use something else because these minds are disturbed for many different reasons. And the disturbed mind is not going to stop because you take away the gun. They're, they're going to find another way. That's why I always get annoyed when people say, well, a lot of other countries don't have the problems of mass shootings. If we got rid of the guns, there wouldn't be mass shootings. And it's like, in a way, that's true. If you get rid of all the guns, yes, there won't be mass shootings because there won't be any guns to shoot. But there could still be mass killings. You know, if we we take away all the food, there's not going to be any people choking. But that's not (laughs) what you when we take away all the cars, there won't be any car accidents that's very true but there's still you know there's still countries that have more mass killings than we do especially like in the middle east they just don't use guns so i'm telling you these sick minds that are bent on that kind of destruction are going to find something else now of a good voice of reason on all this and getting to the core of this problem was matt walsh i talked a little bit on about this on pm orlando earlier this week but i found some audio he was on fox news earlier this week and he actually made a, a really good point on all of this, and I wanted to I wanted to play some of it here for you. Uh, Matt Walsh on Fox News talking about getting to the core issue when it comes to these mass killings. Uh, this is what he said. The problem is every time something like this happens, people retreat behind their ideological sort of fortresses and start flinging these talking points at each other, which I think most of the time what people are saying is they're not really trying to get to the deeper issue. They just have their standard uh, point that they make, and it doesn't amount to anything. I think we need to go deeper than those than those issues and figure out why you know I, I, what i see in a lot of these shootings not just in the shootings but also in the reaction to the shootings in the public is that people are detached they're numb they're desensitized listen to the to the survivors of these shootings they always say the same thing about the you know the the, the shooter has a blank look on his face or he's mm-hmm. smirking as was the case in el paso he just he's not angry he's not running around shouting it's just someone who's completely numb and has total disregard for human life. And so I think that's what we need to get to the bottom of. Why Why is there so much of that in this culture? And I think he's right, because there is a lot of that in this culture, this sort of detachment. All you have to do is go on go on Twitter, go on, on social media and see the way people react to stuff like this. And it's not it's not human. It's not normal. There's a detachment there. That's specifically in our culture right now. And then he says, so we need to get to the bottom of this. And I think he makes some good points and he continues on here. 
I think there are, look there are a lot of there are a lot of culprits you could point to and some things like the you know the broken homes the fatherlessness epidemic a, 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 a disproportionate number of these shooters come from fatherless homes that's not a coincidence but I also think and this and this of course isn't the only factor but the internet plays I think a role in this too I, we. Um, you know, the El Paso shooter was on these message boards, and people on these message boards talk about shootings like they're video games or something like that. Like they, they, they just don't even understand that these are real human beings. I think what happens on the Internet is we, we go into this, into this world where we're sort of wallowing in filth, where people treat each other like scum. And, we, and that's just, it's a sort of almost uh, standard greeting on the Internet for people to say things like, you know, I hope you get cancer, I hope right. you die, kill yourself. These are normal things people say on the Internet. We get so accustomed to that, um, to treating each other that way, to being treated that way, that I think it has a desensitizing effect after a while. And by the way, Matt Walsh is a columnist for the Daily Wire. He's speaking on Fox News here. And, you know, if you follow him on Twitter, he said earlier this week that white nationalism is definitely a problem that we need to address because we've had now three shootings within the past, like, what, eight months that are directly connected to white nationalism. So it's something we have to address, and I thought he made a good point. But he made a good point there that, you know, when it talks about part of there's a lot of different issues here. But the thing he was talking about there was, once again, the Internet, that we have this sort of different life on social media where we tr- we, we don't treat each other like human beings. It's not normal how we're treating each other. The, it's like we have the lowest common denominator of ourselves online. But what he's saying there is eventually, if you live in that world so much, there's no way that you can that it's not going to bleed over to the rest of your life. There's no way it's not going to bleed over to the rest of society. You know, we should be, we want to be good to each other outside of the internet. We say we're good people to our neighbors and all that stuff, but we should have that same approach when we're on the internet. But a lot of it's just filth. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, this mass shooter was, there's no doubt in my mind, he was just immersed in all of this filth that, that you see all of the time. And it's not, it's not good. It's not good. Um, now, Matt Walsh continues on here. What you see with the, this is the, the, a, a, the most severe possible manifestation of sort of the Internet troll who goes and just says awful things to people without any regard for, uh, for what, how, what effect that's going to have on them. And, uh, and basically, these are people who, you know, online, they act like total scumbags, frankly. And it just, it, it shouldn't be surprising that eventually, if someone behaves that way every day, hours and hours and hours a day, they spend acting that way. Um, it's, it shouldn't be a surprise that they then go and, and eventually that translates into the real world. I mean, is he, is he not wrong there? You know, he's talking about how, and I, I see it. I think we all do it if we if we pay any kind of real attention on social media, especially Twitter. We see that stuff, and we all think, "Oh, well, that's just our internet selves. That's just the internet world." And he's saying, "That's still you. That's still you on there doing these things." And we're crazy if we don't think that that part of ourselves is going to start bleeding over to the rest of our lives. It's still a part of us and our culture and our society. And this is something we have to address. We need an ethic when it comes to our life in cyberspace. And it seems like we don't have that right now. And he continues on here. Well, you know, there's, there's not one single thing we can do. But, uh, you know, there are little things like with as parents, I have three kids myself. And my kids are young. But what I know with my, with my kids is they're not going to be spending uh, 10 hours a day on the Internet. Uh, right. we, we have to do things to... You know, have our kids engaging in, in the real world um, and uh, and developing social skills and interpersonal skills. So things like that. Uh, also, as as fathers, I think it's very important for us to um, stay at home and to and to raise our kids. I mean, really basic, fundamental level types of things. I think that we need to start doing. Um, and it's all going to begin. It's not going to begin in Washington. I don't right. think. I think it begins at home, as parents. I think he's right. I think he's exactly right there, and it's what I've been saying for a long time, that the real problems right now in today's society, it it starts in the home, it starts in our culture, and it's not, we're we're trying to find the fixes in D.C., you're not going to find them in Washington, D.C., it starts with raising your family, being attached to your local community, maybe your local church, 
maybe and like I said, your family, your neighbors, there's something to that that we need to find. You know, I recently read the book by a Ben Sass called Them. And he talks about this a lot in that we've lost our sense of community in so many places in American society that we're finding it on the internet. But when we find it on the internet, these shared spaces we find on the internet are mostly anti something else. So we find a shared community on the internet and that whole community online is being anti Democrat or anti Republican or anti Trump or anti, you know, we're finding these communities that are just anti, 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 instead of finding things that really should unite us in a positive way. And I think anyone who goes online understands that and sees that and knows that. And that's why I say all the time, we need to remember what we're, we stand for, not what we just stand against. But it's much easier to be in these communities and stand against something. And it's a problem. It's a problem. Now, when it comes to gun control, there's been a push for red flag laws. And there's really big debate. And I'm kind of torn on this, to be honest with you, because I understand both sides of the debate. But Matt, Matt Walsh uh, addressed that. Now, just so you know, red flag laws would be that um, a family member or a law enforcement or something could petition a court to have someone's guns taken away if there are certain red flags that say that they're going to use those guns for bad purposes like a mass shooting. But it has to be approved by a judge, and then that person can petition the court to get his guns back and so forth and convince the court. And Matt Walsh uh, talked about this, or in, in just in general, how everyone's like just saying, Let's, Washington's got to do something to fix the problem. And he makes a good point. Here it is. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, I, could, I understand the desire to do something, but I think to, to say to Washington, hey, just do something, do anything, do anything at all, I think that could be really dangerous because we don't, we don't want them to just do something. We, we need to do things that actually are going to make a difference. These red flag, flag laws, I understand, the, I understand the, the thought process behind them, but I'm, we always should be wary about the idea of taking anyone's rights away when they haven't been accused or, or, char, or charged, I should say, with a crime. You know, this, the, the shooter in, um, in, in Dayton, Ohio, had a, had a hit list, yeah. apparently. Now, it should be, I, I'm pretty sure it's illegal to have a hit list. So yes. in that case, we should be able to, with existing laws, uh, prevent him from acquiring guns. But if someone hasn't actually committed a crime, then I'd be pretty wary about taking their rights exactly. away. Indeed. Uh, because, you know, the, the, the Bill of Rights still exists. Yeah. So I think for something like this, the devil's in the details, basically, that if we're going to do a red flag laws, we have to make sure that there is enough due process involved. So we're not just willy nilly taking people's guns away for the stupidest reasons or end up political reasons or something like that, that there is a real legitimate threat there. And that's what we have to do. I I think that's my take on the red flag laws that if we're going to do this, we need to do it right. Because, I mean, there are probable cause and a lot of other things, you know, a lot of times if you're arrested for something (laughs) you haven't seen a judge until after you've been arrested so i mean there could be an argument either way but he's saying look we can't just be like do something do something do something got to make sure that something is right and constitutional you know make sure that we're still keeping our rights in the process now someone else who had a really good comment on all of this was uh, vice president mike pence we're going to hear that and and, uh, much more this is beyond reason radio i'm your host michael yaffe we'll be right back If you heart Beyond Reason Radio, listen to the Beyond Reason Radio podcast on iHeartRadio. Just download the iHeartRadio app and search Beyond Reason Radio. This is Orlando's Smart Talk Radio. Beyond Reason Radio continues now. Welcome back to the show, everyone. This is Beyond Reason Radio, filling in for Carl Jackson. Usually you'll hear the Carl Jackson show at this time. But uh, he had prior commitments, so uh, he asked me to fill in, and I am here trying to be a voice of reason through the news this week. Um, Mass shootings, had two last week, and horrible mass shootings, and um, was talking about that, talking about gun control. A little bit, I want to mention a little bit about the heated political rhetoric, Um, but there is something, you know, I said that there were some things on the right that I also didn't like to see this week. And an example of that that really bothered me was something that Mitch McConnell's supporters did this week. Um, they they actually tweeted out. So here's a story from the New York Post. It has to do with AOC Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Says uh, Representative Ocasio Cortez went on the warpath Tuesday over a picture of some Mitch McConnell supporting high schoolers groping and mo- mock choking a cardboard cutout of her. 
Uh, but the Senate Majority Leader and his supporters said her complaints were paper thin. And you look at the picture, it looks pretty bad. They have a cardboard cutout of AOC, and they're like choking and groping it. And I understand these are kids, but it's not something you should be doing. And so here, here's my problem with all of this. Uh, Michigan Republican Party Chairman Saul and Newsies commented on reaction to this because AOC was upset, and I could see why she'd be upset. I don't usually agree with AOC and things, but I can understand why she'd be upset at this. It has to do with her. Um, and he said this in response. He said, I think we are taking political correctness to the extremes. I think the political rallies, these kids who thought it was funny, thought it was a funny thing to do. Nobody intended to, you know, show any disrespect or any of the negative things that she's claiming. And then uh, another person said, Kevin Golden, who is McConnell's campaign manager, said in no way condones any aggressive, suggestive, or demeaning act towards life-side car- cardboard cutouts of any gender in a manner similar to what we saw from President Obama's speech writing staff several years ago. So mentioning that Obama staffers did something similar a few years ago. W- nice whataboutism. But Golden then added, we've watched for years as the far left and the media look for every possible way to demonize, stereotype, and publicly castigate every young person who dares to get involved with Republican politics. Here's my response to this. Yes, political correctness has gone out of hand in this country. Yes, the left overreacts to things, no doubt about it. But what these kids did was wrong. It's not, it was immoral to do this. It's not a good thing you should do. I'm sorry. It's not a good thing, even if you're kids, to go out and put out a picture like that, of like you're choking and groping a member of Congress, even if you don't like her. Why can't we just say that? Why can't we just say, you know what? These kids were wrong. We don't have to destroy their lives or anything, but Mitch McConnell comes out in response. He say, look, sorry, I don't condone what these kids did. They were wrong. They should know better. They should apologize. And they apologize, and then we move on. But we're so defensive now that the left does something, and then we react, oh, 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 well, 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 political correctness. Political correctness and trying to be anti-political correct doesn't excuse immorality. If you do something wrong, just own up to it. If someone on our side does something wrong, we should be able to say, you know what? That was wrong. They probably shouldn't have done that. It's immoral to do something like that. But we're always willing to excuse immorality when it's on our side because, well, well, it's it's against the left. No, no, no. I don't care. Wrong is wrong. You know, some issues are just right versus wrong, and we should be willing to do that. Now, when it comes to the reaction to the mass shootings, I thought— one of the best speeches I heard afterwards was from Vice President Mike Pence. He was at, earlier this week, he was at the Alliance Defending Freedom, which is a religious freedom organization. And he actually was talking about the mass shootings, but he was also talking about the real heated political rhetoric that's come out of this week. So Democrats have basically come out and blamed Trump for these mass shootings, which is absurd. <laughs> it's just completely dumb and absurd. But they've done that, and it's just making things, the political division in our country, even worse, what the Democrats have been saying this week. And Mike Pence responded to all this, and I think he's exactly right. Here's what he said. Now is the time to set destructive partisanship aside and find the courage to answer hatred with unity, devotion, and love. Now is the time to overcome evil with good. And that's straight out of the Bible, and that's what we should do. And that's why I get upset with things that, like when the McConnell supporters did because they that's not what they were doing. They want to fight fire with fire. They want to fight evil with more evil, more immorality with more immorality. And Mike Pence is like, how about we just fight evil with good? How about we come together and try to solve problems and actually be good to one another? Oh, what a thought. Maybe that would fix a lot of the problems in this country. <laughs> but nobody wants to do that. Now, Mike Pence uh, also continues on here um, reacting to the mass shootings. And here's what he said. You know, it's always been true throughout the long history of this country that in times of trial, the American people turn to faith and prayer. The Bible tells us that if his people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray, that he'll hear from heaven and he'll heal our land. And in this dark hour for the people of El Paso and Dayton, we do well to pray. Pray for healing. Pray for the families of those that were lost and injured. 
pray for these communities and for our nation as a whole. We also do well in this time to recognize that the greatest source of community in the modern world is faith. Our nation was built on strong voluntary associations and depends on them more today than ever before. From the American founding, voluntary associations, churches, synagogues, places of worship, and religious education have been at the center of American communities, and they are the wellspring of American strength. I mean, and so I posted some of this on Twitter, and you know what response I was getting? Oh, you're just going to pray the bullets away? Oh, I'm so sick of thoughts and prayers. Do something. Now, for one, if you actually listen to his whole speech, he actually did talk about action that him and his administration were going to do. But they completely missed the point. The point was not only prayer, because prayer works because you were getting help from Almighty God. What better help is that? But he also talked about the fact that we need community. And what better source community do we get than when we pray and when we go to church? It's a great source of community. I just talked about in the first whole segment of the show how what causes a lot of these mass shooters is they're lonely, sick individuals who have no community and have no core and have no center and are filled with crap on the Internet. And they want to shoot people. Maybe if they went to church and found a real community with real purpose, they would be a lot better and wouldn't want to shoot up a bunch of people. And so Mike Pence is basically giving that reason. And people are like, oh, what an idiot. He wants to pray. Yes. What he's saying is good for our culture. It would be good for young people. Now, uh, Mike Pence, I believe. How many more cuts? I have one more cut. I have two more cuts. Okay. Oh, the next cut got a lot of criticism. Here it is. Number one is um, spend more time on your knees than on the Internet. So that's a great comment because he's talking about maybe you should actually spend time praying instead of on the Internet so much, bashing other people. You know what happened online when he put that out there? Even from people, I, my trolls, they, they twisted it in a sick, perverted way. That was their first reaction is to look, to, to look at that as some kind of sick, perverted way and laugh about it. You want to talk about how sick our culture can be on the Internet? There's a great example of it. They all knew what he meant. What he meant was a good thing, but immediately they went to a sick, perverted thing because that's what we do. You want to talk about what causes the problems in a lot of young men? There it is. They can't even react to these things good. Now, uh, one more cut here. He continues on. I never lose sight of how blessed we are to be Americans. I mean, my when I was in the Congress, I traveled around the world on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Many of you are serving various places around the world. Um, Governor of Indiana, I was, uh, I traveled a bit. Thank you. (laughs) But in this role, the president's asked me to represent the United States in in places all over the world. And I I tell you, there is nowhere like America. Um, The reason I wanted to play this comment is when I hear a lot of the political rhetoric, you, you just hear so much like, I don't know. Everything's a crisis. Everybody hates America. Everyone wants to radically transform the country. And it was just nice to hear, you know, maybe we should take a step back and realize how blessed we are in this country. If it's that bad, why is everybody trying to get here? Yeah, exactly. We're so blessed here. And, you know, these sick young minds on the Internet, maybe they should take a step back and realize, you know what? Life's pretty good here. And I can make a lot better life for myself. We have problems. And Mike Pence admits that. We're also blessed. Imagine if we all actually took a step back and did that. All right. Uh, it's a comment again on some of the, the political shaming Joaquin Castro got into, what he said this week. We'll get to that. This is Beyond Reason Radio. I'm your host, Michael Yaffe. We'll be right back. It would be beyond reason not to listen to Yaffe on your TuneIn Radio app. Download the app today and search Beyond Reason Radio. The conscience in your ear telling you the difference between right and wrong. Yaffe is back on the air. 
Welcome back to the show, everyone. This is Beyond Reason Radio. I'm your host, Michael Yaffe, the voice of reason in a world that is beyond reason. We are on till 8 p.m. tonight right here on News Radio 93.1 WFLA. If you've missed any of the show so far, what you want to do is like the Beyond Reason Radio Facebook page, um, or you can follow me on Twitter at P-M-O-W-F-L-A, or you can just find the podcast anywhere, and I mean anywhere, that podcasts are available. Um, I want to play a little bit from uh, Joaquin Castro. If I called him Joaquin Phoenix earlier in the show, I'm sorry. You know, when you think Joaquin, you think Phoenix, the actor. No, no, this is Castro, brother of Julian Castro. He created a lot of controversy this week when he put out a list of Trump's donors in his district. Now, what's really interesting is a couple of those donors actually donated to him, too. (laughs) So uh, I don't know if that helps or hurts. But he's claiming now that he wasn't trying to intimidate these people or really shame, you know, wasn't trying to um, scare these people or anything like that. And he was on uh, Morning Joe earlier this week trying to defend himself. I want to play a little bit of this. Here's what he said. But, Congressman, as you look at this list, I know you said you didn't put their addresses out there. It's easy to find them. These people undoubtedly are already being harassed online or perhaps uh, face-to-face in some cases. They could be. What do you say to those people this morning who said, I made a campaign donation and now I'm going to be harassed I'm going to have people protesting outside my business or perhaps even my home. What do you say to them? Do you want them to repent for their support for Donald Trump, or what do you want from them? Well, the first thing is that I don't want anybody harassed or targeted. But they will be because you put their names in public. Look, that that was not my intention. But that's what will happen. These things are public. No, what I would like for them to do is think twice about supporting a guy who is fueling hate in this country. And do you agree, I mean, uh, do you agree in this, co- Congressman, do you agree that in this culture, and believe me, I'm making no equivalency to what Donald Trump's doing. We're on the record on this show three hours a morning about the ads that they're putting up, about the rhetoric he uses. But if you agree that rhetoric can lead to incitement, even if it just triggers one person to do something terrible, does it give you any pause about putting these people's names out in public? Well, Willie, they're already public. They're already out there. Oh, there are 11 sense. retirees sense. and one homemaker who are not public. Right. And this was already circulating. I shared it, so I didn't create the graphic. No, I think, if anything, I think what I am concerned about is the distraction from the fact that people are grieving in El Paso, uh, that these folks just got killed, and there are funerals that are being planned right now. Uh, and the world and the country should be focused on that. And on the country coming together. I mean, I don't mean to laugh at that. The country unifying. So I'm concerned about all of that. I don't want anybody on the left or the right to be a target of any crazy person, of any person who means them harm at all. The only reason I kind of chuckled at that, I didn't mean to chuckle at exactly what he was saying, is because... He says, I'm concerned about the distraction and we should be focused on the funerals and so forth, which he's right there. But if that's your concern, why would you tweet out a list of Trump donors? If your concern is, oh, well, this all political stuff is a distraction. You are part of the distraction. You're the one who put that out there. But what what really bothers me is he says, I wasn't trying to intimidate. Yes, you were. You were trying to put this up to shame supporters of Trump so people would go after them and their businesses and possibly their homes and they would be forced to to shut up because your goal is to shut people up. And that's what makes me afraid of where all of this leads because one of the biggest fears I have in this country is political segregation where every part of our culture now is going to be segregated based on our politics. So what coffee shop we go to will be based on our politics. What, <laughs> where we live, what, you know, whatever, what store we go to, there won't be any shared spaces anymore. And that's what, cause you're going to boycott anyone who happens to be a Republican or something. And then it'll lead to much worse where it will be Trump supporters. So if you're a Trump supporter now, they're going to believe the worst of you and you should be shamed in public. That's where all this going. So they go to the lowest common denominator. They're saying every this is Trump is a racist. And just because he disagrees with me, basically, 
And that if you support him, you're a racist and you're evil and you should be shamed. And this is, this is not good. You want to talk about what's really divisive in this country. This stuff is very divisive and dangerous, I think. That's why a lot of people don't put bumper stickers on their cars yeah. any longer and they don't wear the MAGA hats in mixed company. So to yeah, speak. it's it's not good. And I'm someone who criticizes a lot of Trump's rhetoric. Don't get me wrong. But to go out and do something like this based on their political beliefs, where does this lead? And by the way, he's talking about, well, this stuff is public. Now we know why we have all these ca- campaign finance laws on the books that force these kind of donors to put their stuff out public. They said, oh, it's to get money out of politics. No, it wasn't. It was to make it public so the people that were donating could be intimidated. That's why they did it. So there's a whole nother angle to that. But we have to learn to get along with each other because we have to live with each other in this country. We do, left and right. And we have to learn to get along even if we disagree. And obviously we can't seem to do that. And it seems like both sides are actually at fault of this. But what the left's doing is really, well, it's just beyond reason. If you missed any of the show, catch the podcast anywhere that podcasts are available. iTunes, iHeartRadio app, anywhere. Make sure to give me a good review as well. Share with your friends. Like the Beyond Reason Radio Facebook page. Follow me on Twitter at PMOWFLA or Instagram as well. And, well, I will see you guys next time.